you're enjoying the music, ambient noise, lighting, and incense, which is vanilla and not Nag Champa, by the way, because while Nag Champa is great and a really good traditional incense for meditation and relaxation, I personally prefer vanilla. Pretty much everything you see here is what people will associate in their mind when they hear the word Zen, or at least I do, which is incense, meditation music, ambient noise such as birds tweeting or the sea rumbling, and the cloths as well. Things with a Far Eastern or Indian theme also go with the word Zen, which is a bit odd and is probably to do with the films we watch. When we actually look at the definition of the word Zen, it's actually just a Japanese school of Mayahana Buddhism, emphasizing the value of meditation and intuition rather than ritual worship or study of scriptures. So the basic idea from what I got from that is to do with, well, being confident in yourself and being able to meditate and having a lot of self-reflection. Which when people say in slang that they're so Zen, they generally mean that they're quite calm. Which is why I'm going to be talking about it today, because in the modern world, Zen has a completely different meaning and a completely different set of actions to achieve what people mean when they say that. So realistically, I'm doing a video on how to keep calm with a nice background. So in the modern world, I think you need to be able to do a few things to remain calm and have a generally happy life, you know, inner peace and all that, which is be organized, have the ability to let go, give yourself enough breathing room for tasks, learn self-reflection, confidence, and how to be comfortable with your own thoughts. So the first one, being organized, that can be achieved in a couple of ways. The way I like to do it is I have a moleskin diary, which is an excellent little thing, which is about the size of an A6 piece of paper, and on one side you've got the week, and on the other side you've got notes, which I'll get to later. So this is for the week to week, and then there's also the day to day. For the day to day, I quite like to use an app called Swipes. So what the notebook does is it lets me write down things that I've got coming up that week. So when, for example, my gaming group does its sessions, if I've got an invoice coming up, if I've got a meeting coming up. And then for the day to day, I use an app called Swipes, which lets me write down to-do list tasks for each day, schedule them for a set day, and then I can access this on my phone or my computer. And you just swipe right on a task and it'll go into the completed section, and you can view everything that you've completed over that day, and it's really useful. If you can't complete a task that day, swipe left and you'll be able to delay it for a different day. In terms of how this gets you to be calm on the inside is that the long-term goal that you can just plant in your diary and then have the shorter-term goals is little items in swipe. So this avoids you becoming overwhelmed and means that it's easy to keep track on what you're doing with your life as well as you can write down chores that you have to do, things that are coming up, and you're not having to constantly remember them and put brain power towards that. You can keep your mind calm to actually concentrate on doing the things because you've got a handy reference of what you have to do. So in terms of letting go, the Moleskin notebook comes in handy with this because it also acts as a week-to-week -week diary. So particularly when it comes to the end of each week or a Sunday or a Monday, I write down what happened over the previous week, what goals I accomplished, what stuff arrived in the post, uh, what I did wrong, what I did well, what I did with my friends. Basically this helps me to stop thinking about what I did over the week and have um, a set day where I concentrate over the week and figure out what I did wrong and what I need to do next week to make things right. Which this in combination with the diary and the to-do list can be actually quite helpful in organizing your life and making sure that you're on track with things. Writing things down helps you reinforce them in long-term memory. It means that you can let them go from your short-term memory and into your long-term memory and helps your brain sort of forget about the unimportant shit because you wrote it down. And this is a thing, when it comes to organizing tasks as well, as I mentioned earlier with breathing room, you need to give yourself breathing room when it comes to money and time management. So say you've got a boss asking for a piece of work to be done. You know it's going to take two days. Tell him it takes two and a half because then you've got time to not rush through it if you get things wrong. So for example, if you underestimated with your two days, you then have that extra day or extra half a day to be able to complete the task in. Something goes wrong in those two days, you have extra time to be able to compensate and correct for it. And it's the same with money. We hear a lot of people complaining about not having enough money to do things, and largely when I hear this from people my age, it's due to poor money management. They get their paycheck and they spend it on tat instead of putting some away to last them long term. Something that helps me is having a spreadsheet that keeps track of how much money I have, how many months is going to last me and from there I can tech what I need to do with savings account and yada yada yada. And the idea is to give yourself enough breathing room so that you're not doing things on a knife's edge and you have enough grace to be able to correct for small mistakes and errors. A savings account helps with this and just extra time to be able to complete tasks. So what's really important with modern distractions is learning to be comfy with your own thoughts and spending time by yourself. This might seem less important to those that are introverted because you probably already do this, but to the extroverted who can't spend a minute by themselves, you need to at least try and have an hour where you spend time with yourself, meditate, read a book, or even just self-reflect on 
who you'd like to be as a person. As this ties back into self-reflection and confidence, if you're not comfortable with yourself and your own thoughts, you can never self-reflect and gain confidence in who you are as a person because you're not willing to confront your inner demons. And if you can do that, then the next thing I would suggest in terms of trying to get more confidence is just to practice confidence, i.e. fake it till you make it. I heard this advice off of, I think it was Woody's Gamer Tag a good few years ago, but it works. If you pretend you're confident and you basically, even though you're shit scared, you still try and act confident, it will eventually become a habit and you will gain confidence through doing that. And this can transfer into if you want to fix some certain defects within your personality. If you just try and catch yourself doing them and basically concentrate really hard on changing into who you want to be. So first you need to have thought of what you would rather want to do instead of those personality traits and just basically concentrate on doing that instead of what you currently do and catch yourself doing it. They both become habits and all confidence is is a personality trait that you're trying to change. So you can take this and apply it to anything. Do you talk too much? Are you narcissistic? Are you angry with everybody? Just basically try and practice like pretending to be who you want to be but in actual social situations and it will eventually become a habit and a part of who you are. If you want to remain calm in modern life you need to have got the base of this which is just making your life easy for yourself and trying to gain confidence and comfort with who you are as a person and changing the bits that you don't like about yourself because we're all a bit shit in certain ways. So yeah, I kind of hope this helped guys and I hope you have a relaxing time. Do you know what's really relaxing? Subscribing to my channel and turning on subscriber notifications. Bye!